Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to look at creating fan style patterns like this in Adobe Photoshop. We're going to do it in such a way that the patterns can be altered really, really easily without having to start everything over again. Before we begin, however, the layering of the objects we're going to be using is critical. So I have a colored version here. This is not a repeat pattern, so don't go copying it because it's not going to work. But here we've got these green shapes at the bottom. These are circles. It's just that they're placed in such a way that you can't see bits of them. The green things at the bottom you can see are at the very top of the layers palette. The thing in the middle, middle of the layers palette. Things at the top, bottom of the layers palette. Take a screenshot of this if you're going to be confused by it. But this ordering is going to be really important. And when things are all the same color, it's going to be a little bit difficult to work out exactly what's going on if you haven't studied this first. If you're following along, make the same size document as I do so that everything's going to line up perfectly because for this pattern, lining up is really crucial. Making a document 1000 by 1000 pixels in size, I'm going to click Create. I'm going to the Ellipse tool here. So it's this one, it's a Shape tool. Up here on the toolbar, there's three options. You're going to choose Shape. We're going to choose a fill. Now I liked these sort of gradient fills, so I think I was using some sort of a pink gradient fill, which is kind of cute. And for my stroke, I'm just using a solid pink stroke and I'm using an eight pixel stroke. You make yours as wide or as narrow as you like. From this drop down list, however, you need to go to the align option and you need to set it to this first option. That's making sure that the strokes are on the inside of the shape. And so when we create a 500 by 500 pixel shape, it doesn't have bits of the stroke hanging over the edge, which is going to mess our measurements up. So. Let's just get started here. We're going to click in the middle of the document. We're going to type 500 and then 500 to create a 500 pixel by 500 pixel circle. So I want to place this in the bottom corner of the document. So I'm going to click on it with the move tool. I'm going to start moving it into position. Now, if you can't get it in the right position, then this is what we're going to do. With it selected, we're going to edit and then free transform path. And up here are the free transform options. We want to make sure that the middle of this shape is in the bottom corner. And the document was a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. Every single one of these X and Y values is going to be either a thousand or 500 pretty much. So this is near enough to a thousand. So it really should be a thousand. And this one near enough to a thousand should be 1000. So I'm just going to type those values in and click the check mark. That's why we made these things fixed sizes, just kind of make life so much easier. So this is an ellipse shape at the moment. We're going to right click it and we're going to choose convert to smart object. It's crucial that you do that at this point, otherwise it's going to be too late. So let's go and grab this shape, drag and drop it onto the plus sign down here. So we've got two of them. We're going to take the next one across and we're going to line it up to the first one. We're also going to double check that its center point is in the correct position. So we'll go up here to edit and then free transform. With this center point, you'll notice that I've got this check mark turned on so I can see this little box of nine or this little arrangement of nine boxes. And we want to make sure that the middle one is selected. And so the bottom of this is at 500, 1000. It's in exactly the perfect spot. So I'm just going to click the check mark. Now, if we remembered from that previous diagram, these are the green shapes and they're going to need to be at the top of the layers palette. Just checking on it. So we're going to take one of these shapes, going to drop them onto the plus sign to make a duplicate of it. And then we're going to start moving it. Now I've moved this one so it's not below these two. I'm just going to drag it below those two. So it's going to sit in the exact correct position. So now let's go and get it into position. We're going to select it, edit, free transform. And here what we need is 750 and 750. So it's at 750 in one dimension, but it's not in the other. So I'm just going to type 750 here and then I'm going to click the check mark and that shape is in position. Now the last two, which are these two up here, need to be at the bottom of the layers palette. So let's go and select this one, drag and drop it onto the plus symbol. Let's grab the bottom version of it because it's just going to make life easier and let's start moving it. I'm just moving it with the arrow keys. I'm using shift and the arrow key. 
its middle needs to be in the exact center of the document. So we'll go to Edit, Free Transform, and this needs to be 500, 500 because the document is 1000 by 1000. And we'll go and grab another copy of this and we'll move it across. And its middle needs to be on the edge here. Edit, Free Transform. Let's check up here, 1000 on the X and this is near enough to 500 but not quite so let's make it 500 pixels and click the plus sign. So this is now a seamless repeating pattern. Well part of it is, not all of it. We just want this little bit down here. So we're going to the rectangular marquee tool and up here in the style area you're going to choose fixed size because we need to make a fixed size selection which is 500 pixels by 500 pixels. Now I've been working in this already so mine reads 500 by 500, you might have to put it in there. And I'm just going to click down here in the bottom corner of the document. Now because I have my guides turned on, you can see I've got snap turned on and I'm snapping to everything, then this has just gone into the exact right place. So this is my pattern piece. So I'm going to open up my Patterns panel. Now you can get to yours by choosing Window and then Patterns. With the new Patterns panel, all we need to do is just click on the plus symbol because this selection is now going to be a pattern. You can see I've been goofing around with these patterns already today. So this is our pattern. I'm just going to click OK. Now when we designed this, well when I designed this pattern you'll remember that we made this into a smart object. So every one of these shapes is the exact same smart object, just duplicate it and put in a different position. So while we're here let's see how this pattern is going to work in terms of being editable. So I'm going to double click on the little thumbnail here because that's going to open this smart object up. So right now we're just looking at one circle shape. So I'm going to grab this, I'm going to drag and drop it onto the plus sign so we've got two here. I'm going to change the fill of it. To do that I need to go back into one of the shape tools to be able to get access to the fills here. So with this fill I'm just going to choose a different fill just so that you can see what's going on and let's choose a different stroke. So I've got some light colors here, let's go and choose a sort of purple stroke on this. Now. The two shapes are on top of each other so I want to shrink this down a little bit so let's go back to our Edit Free Transform because that's a nice handy tool to use and here is the width percentage and height percentage so we can just from the center of the document we can just scale these down. So I'm going to type here 85 percent for the width and height and I'm just going to hit the check mark and so now I could make another copy of this one Let's make sure that works. I'm going to put it on top and this time I'm going to scale it down 70%. Edit, Free Transform and we're just going to drop these 15% at a time. Now we could do it again with this one but there is going to be a problem if we want these to be evenly scaled because this one's already been scaled so scaling it again is not going to work. So let's just see what we're going to do. I'm going to drag it onto the plus sign I'm going to place my new copy at the front of everything and I'm going to hold the ALT key as I scale up the corners and I just want to scale it back up to its 500 by 500. So now I can scale it down because the scaling value that I'm going to use is going to work on the big shape not the littler shape, it's just not going to scale correctly. So Edit, Free Transform, last time we went to 70, this time we're going to 55%. You can see that the scaling is working really nicely here. Let's call it done at this stage. This is an embedded smart object so we're going up here to the ellipse one PSB file. We're just going to click the close button and when you're asked if you want to save it, click yes. So now when we're going back into our pattern document you can see that our entire pattern has updated. Every single one of these was a copy of the same smart object. So to make a pattern out of this we're just going to the patterns panel which I've lost. So let's go to window and patterns, hit the plus sign and here is our new pattern. So it's time now to test the pattern so we're going to choose file and then new. We need a larger size document to test these, doesn't matter what size you use, I'm using 2000 by 2000. So let me just move this out of the way, let's go to the LAS panel for this document, I'm just unlocking it so that I can just click on these patterns and the shape is filling up with the patterns. 
Now because this particular object here that we've made our shape out of is that smart object, we can come in and change it over and over and over again. So you can make as many of these patterns as you like by just doing different things with that circular object. So of course what you'll want to do, since you've spent so much time actually working on this file, is you'll want to save this file because this has got everything in it, including the selection for making your pattern. If you're not 100% sure that if you come back in six months time you're going to remember how big the selection needed to be, well you can go up here to select and because we've got a selection already in place, we can set it to save. And so what we might call it here is Pattern Swatch. So we're creating a saved selection inside this file. Let's get rid of our selection. I'm going to select deselect and when we want to bring it back into the document all we have to do is go to select and then load selection. We're going to bring in the pattern swatch and click OK and here it is automatically in place. If you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.